Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will actually compute the killing form for GLN and SLN very explicitly. So, we will actually do the direct computation as well as use the theory to compute. So, let us actually recall what is the killing form. So, here is the definition so which is denoted by cup of G of x comma y. So, this is given by the trace of at g x composition at g y okay? and it is a form for form on the space g. Okay? So, here is the immediate uh, observations. So, the cup of g is symmetric G invariant bilinear form. So, the Cartan criteria says the Cartan criteria tells you that G is semi simple if and only if the form, the killing form is non degenerate. Okay. So, now uh, recall that if we have this uh, cup of G is non degenerate. So, then we can actually look at the corresponding cup of G tilde which is a map from G to G star which is given by x goes to the cup of G of x comma dash and this map is G module map which will be isomorphic. Okay. So, this kappa tilde is G module isomorphism. Okay. So, so in particularly we have cup of G non degenerate implies that G is isomorphic to G star as G modules. Okay, this is very important observation. So, now if we start with G being simple module, simple Lie algebra, so then that implies immediately that the adjoint representation okay, is irreducible. Okay. So, that means uh, G is irreducible as a G module. So, G is irreducible as G module. So, we are talking about the adjoint representation. Okay. So, now simple implies semi simple. Okay. Simple is contained in semi simple. Okay. Now, if you put them together, you can see that. So, you have this cup of G which is non degenerate. So, that will imply that G is isomorphic to G dual. Okay. G is isomorphic to G dual. So, with these conditions, you can see that the space home G, G comma G star, which is isomorphic to the invariant forms on G. So, that is one dimensional. So, this is what Schur's lemma says. Okay. So, this way we can conclude that, so this space of G invariant invariant forms of uh, this uh, simple Lie algebra must be one dimensional. So, what is the conclusion? Conclusion is the space of G invariant bilinear forms must be one dimension for simply algebras G. So, in particularly one can take G to be SLN, then we can see that uh, the space of G invariant uh, bilinear forms that must be one dimensional for for SLM. 
So, now there are actually obviously two different uh, uh, gene variant bilinear forms one can construct for SLN. One is the killing form. So, we can take the killing form. So, which is if you think about it, it is not that easy to compute because we are actually working with the adjoint representation. So, whenever you consider this add x map which is a map from SLN to SLN. So, to compute the trace you are indeed actually looking at that uh, n square minus 1 times n square minus 1 matrix ok. Then you are computing the trace of that. So, it is a very hard calculation to compute uh, the killing form ok. But now using the theory you can easily see that uh, you have the killing form and you also have what is called the trace form. So, how the trace form is defined? So, you, you can actually define this trace form from SLN to SLN, SLN cross to SLN C using what is called the natural representation. So, note that the natural representation C n that is also irreducible as a SLN module. So, C n is an irreducible SLN module. Okay. But anyway, as, well, as far as you have uh, the module, then you can actually define uh, the corresponding trace form. So, you can you can take x y and then may map it to trace of x y. So, the trace of x y is computed as a product of matrices. So, x y makes sense as a matrices. So, you take the product x y and then take the trace of that. So, that is that is what the trace form that comes from this natural representation of SLN. So, you have these two forms. So, then the general theory that tells you that G invariant bilinear forms that form a one dimensional space. So, in particularly these two forms must be scalar type, scalar multiple of each other. Okay. So, it is not hard to prove that uh, this form is uh, G invariant. Actually, we have proved it for any V, uh, V being G module. So, the C n being SLN module. So, this trace form becomes G invariant that is obvious. So, now in particularly we have if you are interested in computing the, uh, the killing form of for SLN then that is exactly equal to some lambda times the trace form of SLN. Okay. To compute uh, the, the value of this lambda, it is enough to actually compute it on some particular choices of x and y. For example, one can take x to be E12 and then y to be E21. E21. Then if you just do the computation, then we can get that cap of SLN of E12 E21 is going to be exactly equal to lambda times the trace of E12 E21, but the product E12 E21 is exactly E11. So, E11 is the matrix with the 1 on the first 1 1 entry and 0 everywhere else, everywhere else 0. So, that means the trace of E11 is just 1. So, that implies that. So, the lambda is exactly equal to the value that you compute for the cap of E12, comma E21. Okay. So, this way you can actually reduce your computation to only some particular values. So, actually we are going to write down the formula for the uh, general matrices. So, I will leave it to you to check what it is actually. So, one can prove that this lambda is exactly equal to 2 n. So, this is I will leave it as exercise and we are going to do the more general computation for GLN. So, it is not very hard. Okay. So, let us actually do the computation for GLN. So, I already told you how one can use the general theory to reduce the computation for SLN. But uh, SLN and GLN differs by only the central element. So, now central element is actually not that hard to compute the action of the central element. So, that is why 
like the computation of SLN will immediately tell you that how to compute it for GLN. So, maybe I will leave it that as exercise, use this to compute the kappa of GLN for general x comma y. So, you have to write x and y as uh, sum of uh, elements from the basis that you get it from SLN and adding the identity. Okay. So, then it will become clear what it will be. Okay. For example, x you write a times the identity matrix plus some x dash that comes from SLN and then y if you write it as b times the identity matrix plus y dash then the kappa of GLN of x comma y is exactly using the linearity. You can see that this is exactly kappa of uh, identity times identity. Okay. A B will come out identity identity plus cop of identity comma x sorry y dash plus cop of x dash the identity plus cop of x dash y dash. So, you can now compute what it is okay? because if you think about it, we are only looking at the adjoint maps. So, add of this n by n matrix identity matrix will be 0. So, add of the identity is 0. So, that is why like you can see that all the computation will become elementary. Okay? So, this is something I will leave it to you to check. Now, let us do the general con computation and then I will convince you that uh, we have the exact formula by doing the general computation. So, let us recall GLN is given by direct sum of C E i j where i j just varies over all 1 to n. So, now what is E i j? This is the i j the elementary matrix. Okay. So, this is the elementary, elementary matrix whose i j uh, entry is 1 and all other entries are 0, okay. where i j entry is 1 and all other entries are 0, all other entries are 0. So, note that if I take e i j e k l, the product is going to be e i l with the delta coefficient j k. Whenever j equal to k, it will be e i l or otherwise it is 0. So, this is very important formula. So, this is immediate from the action of EIJ on the basis. Okay. So, now let us use this uh, formulas and then compute how one can apply uh, this add of this basis elements on general basis element and then write down the formula. So, if we take add of EIJ add of E K L and then apply it on E G H. So, we are only interested in computing the trace. So, we can do the computation on the basis only. So, this is going to be exactly the bracket E I J, the bracket E K L comma E G H. So, note that the bracket E K L E G H is going to be E K L E G H minus E G H E K L. Okay, so, this is going to be exactly delta L G E K H minus delta H K E, e G L. Okay. So, now if you substitute it back, then you get add E I J add E K L on E G H is going to give us exactly the following terms. So, this is exactly E i j comma delta L g E k h minus delta H k E g L. So, which is going to give you lots of terms. So, let me just write it down. So, first you multiply this with this, then you get delta j k E. So, let us just yeah you are anyway going to 
get this coefficient that so delta j k delta l g and then e i h you get. Similarly, minus delta h i delta l g e k j you get then minus delta j g delta h k e i l you get plus delta l i delta h k e g j you get. So, this will be the term. So, now if you call a g h as the coefficient the coefficient of E g h inside this sum ok, add E i j, add E k l and then E g h. So, basically we are looking at the diagonal terms ok. So, where the diagonal terms will be the coefficient of g h ok, E g h inside this. So, that is the ith ith term should be same. So, i is g h ok, this is exactly the a g h. So, then what it is? So, if you just write it in terms of using this formula, so you can easily see that. So, this is exactly delta g i delta j k delta l g minus delta g k delta h j delta h i delta l g and two more terms are there minus delta g i delta h l delta j g delta h k plus delta h j delta l i delta h k. So, now we are interested in the trace ok. So, the cup of j l n of E i j E k l we can just compute. So, then we can actually by linearity we can extend to any basis element. So, now this is going to be exactly summation a g h where g h varies ok. So, if you take this and then you run it over all g h and then sum them then exactly you will get the following formula. This is going to be 2 n times delta i l delta j k minus twice delta i j delta k l. So, this is the term that you get at the end. So, you are running over all g h and then summing it over and then you can see that all the indices because all of them are the deltas ok just, just get cancelled and you will get only these terms. So, now uh, if you just uh, think about it, so what are these terms ok. So, this is basically uh, some products of the terms are there. So, this is actually the trace of E i j, this is the trace of E i j, this is the trace of E k l because there is delta i j delta k l. So, now if we take this thing, so this is just the product ok. So, this is uh, you can think it as the product E i j E k l, the trace of E i j E k l. So, basically you can rewrite the kappa of g l n of E i j E k l. So, we have to write it in everything in terms of E i j E k l. So, this is 2 n times trace of E i j E k l. The product of this is same as this minus twice the trace of E i j times trace of E k l ok. For example, if we want to compute it for uh, E 1 2 and E 2 n. So, which is what we needed for SLN calculation, then you can see that the trace of this E 1 2 E 2 1 is exactly equal to. So, we are going to put E 1 2 here, 
e21 here so this is going to be e11 so this is 2n so this is e12 e21 which becomes e11 so the trace of e11 is 1 and here the trace of e12 which is 0 again trace of e21 that is also 0 so this is 0 this is 0 so you get exactly this okay so now uh, by actually using the linearity for any x and y from gln you can see that the cop of gln of x comma y is exactly 2n times trace of x y minus twice trace of x times trace of y. So, this is a very hardcore computation, but anyway it is good to do it once. Okay. So, this is the explicit formula for the uh, killing form of GLN. So, now uh, if we think about it, if we take x being just the n by n identity matrix, so then you can see that the kappa of GLN of this 1n comma x, okay, maybe just call it y. So, then this is 2n trace of y then minus twice. So, the trace of the identity is going to be n again this is 2n trace of y. So, this is going to be 0. Okay. So, this is just uh, kills all the elements y. So, that means this n by n identity matrix this is in the radical of the bilinear form. Okay. So, this is in the radical of the bilinear form. So, the radical by definition those x in g l n such that the cop of g l n of x comma y is 0 for all y in g l n. Okay. So, that proves that radical is being non-zero and that means the form is non -degen form is degenerate, okay. the form g l n is degenerate. But the form is actually non-degenerate when you actually take uh, SLN and it is not hard to see actually SLN is nothing but the orthogonal complement of this uh, n by n matrix you can take the orthogonal complement of cop of gln uh, with respect to the cop of gln of this identity matrix okay this is just an element so so basically what is what is sln sln is those x in gln such that the kappa of GLN of identity n comma x is oh sorry this is not uh, oh SLN is the comp okay orthogonal complement of the usual form okay I need some editing here so this part should be cut. So, we have proved that uh, the kappa GLN is not degenerate, but from the general theory one can see that kappa of SLN is non degenerate, but kappa of GLN is degenerate. So, one can actually uh, see that uh, for the various uh, uh, subalgebras okay how to compute uh, uh, the killing form okay again one can work with gln and then see like uh, for example if you take so maybe i will leave it as exercise take uh, this standard borel and uh, other nilpotent subalgebra of that okay so let us take the n by n 
upper triangular matrices the set of all n by n upper triangular matrices so compute the cup of tn compute so now you can also take the set of all n by n strictly upper triangular matrices and then again one can compute what is the killing form of this. Similarly, like uh, diagonals also one can compute, take the diagonals the set of all diagonals again compute Okay, I will stop here and uh, we will continue with the Casimir construction of the Casimir element in the next class. Thank you.